I saw stars would circle her defiant veil, whilst her foes would fail, Zahra would prevail. There is a story that's hidden in history's secret, so few tongues would tell it, that its tastes words forget. There is a story that's hidden in history's secrets, so few tongues would tell it that its tastes words forget. It's what happened to the daughter of the best of all men, who passed away broken, denied paper and pen. In his shadow stood a shadow, fearless, not hesitant, hidden yet defiant, oppressed against tyrants. Wanting her veil oppressed, these tyrants she addressed, her words on them hail, Zahra would prevail. There she stood, a woman against men known for their power, yet on them she tower from iron, this flower. Her veil that covered her body draped her from head to toe, armored against her foe, he shook when she said no. No to the rain that was Ali's, usurped by Tinnery. Whilst air her veils carry, beneath them is Ali. Beneath the veil that breathed Ali with a sword, sheathed Ali, her veils sail, Zahra would prevail. Glory be to the Lord that gave her tears such weight and might. Her cries for Ahmed's plight had slipped day into night. God knows what lamenting took place in her house of sorrow. Mourn her with her shadow, weep with her tomorrow. Her tears made a mountain on which against them she would stand and tell them, understand, Ali won't give his hand, allegiance we won't pay. Be it us your swords slay, her words, none could jail, Zahra would prevail. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fatim Zahra alayhi salam holds a special place in the hearts of the believers and the mere mention of her name softens you. You stop and ponder over her tragedy, a young 18-year-old woman who has just become an orphan and yet she is mercilessly attacked and beaten within her own home. A place where she is supposed to be safe and she is attacked by the very people that her father, the Holy Prophet, commanded to protect and honor her. It astounds me that the Ummah that surrounded the Prophet وسلم, and saw the light of revelation come down so quickly turned their backs on the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because truly love and reverence towards Lady Fatima السلام, is obligatory just as Salah, Zakat and Ramadan are obligatory for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah al mawadda Say, O Muhammad, I do not ask of any reward except love for my near ones. And who was more loved to the Prophet than his dear daughter Fatima Zahra salam. But is it enough just to say, I love Fatima Zahra and may my life be sacrificed for her? Is it enough to say this and yet our actions contradict what we were saying on our tongues? Probably. One of the most important lessons we can learn from Sayyidah Fatima is honouring our own women, our own sisters. Because many of us seem to forget the hardships our sisters go through. Not only do they face Islamophobia in the West on a daily basis, but often they feel neglected by their own communities. They're not given the opportunities that the brothers are given to gain knowledge and become teachers of the religion. They don't have access to the scholars and the people that can help them with their difficulties. And when they do speak out about their difficulties, whether it is, for example, the way they are being oppressed or they have doubts in their faith, they're ignored or even judged and scorned. This is a shame, my brothers and sisters. This is one half of the Ummah. How can we say that we love Fatima to Zahra when we are neglecting or even, God forbid, abusing the women or the women who are, try, who, who are trying to follow Fatima Zahra How can we sit in our majalis and cry over 
how Umar spoke to Lady Fatima when we ourselves are speaking to our women in such a disrespectful tone. How can we cry over Fatima Zahra? Or how can we cry over how Fatima was pushed between the door and the wall and then slapped across the face when we ourselves are beating our own women with our hands? How can we cry for the loneliness of Imam Ali السلام, when he buried her when we turn our own women into objects of lust or slaves and refuse to live with them honorably? Women were not put in this earth to be used and abused. Rather, they have rights and it is our duty to treat them honorably. How can we sit and be amazed by the fiery sermon of Fadak that Lady Fatima Zahra gave when we stop our own women from excelling? If we as an Ummah want to progress and work towards the reappearance of our Master Imam Al-Mahdi Sharif, we must stop neglecting the sisters and give them the resources and the encouragement they need to follow in the footsteps of Lady Fatima alayhi salam. Because if we don't act to protect our sisters, then history will just repeat itself. And subhanAllah, how history repeats itself. For I cannot think of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam without also thinking of her daughter Sayyidah Zainab. Because how similar are the stories of Zahra and Zainab? Zahra, she stood and spoke against the tyrants of Saqifa. And Zainab, she stood and spoke against the tyrants of Sham. Zahra was slapped on the streets of Medina, and Zainab was slapped upon the plains of Karbala. But you ask me, why is Zainab called Ummul Musayib and not Fatima to Zahra? Because when Sayyidah Zahra السلام, walked through Medina, she had Hassan and Hussein next to her. I ask you then, who was there to help Zainab walk when she was forced to walk through Sham? When Zahra walked through Medina, she had a veil upon her face so that nobody could look upon her. But when Sayyidah Zainab walked through Sham, there was nothing or nobody to cover her from her eyes of the men or from the eyes of the men. Oh Zahra, your tragedies could have turned day into night, yet you are not Ummul Musayib because no severed heads were put in front of you whilst you were alive. But O Zainab, she saw Yazid poking the bloodied head of Hussein with his cane. O you who usurped us of rights, know that daily in prayer I'll curse you and your heir till my last breath of air. Your heir burnt the door of my house, the door of my father. My muhsin would wither, his ashes I'd gather. If you return for forgiveness, know my Lord won't forgive. A mercy he would give, you yearned it not to live. In every prayer I'll send on the first and second prayers that make men frail, Zahra would prevail. My veil, it is defiance. Some call it oppression. My veil, it is defiance. Some call it oppression. Where it shall brave women as a flag of freedom. Freedom from men that think women like me can be shaken. In the veil I walk in your throne I have broken. My daughters, till the end of time, their shackles they shall break. Revolutions they shall make, leaving tyrants awake. Know this and remember, our veils are armor, the thrones of tyrants fall, Zahra would prevail. I told my husband, bury me. I told my husband, bury me beneath the depths of night. Throw dust upon my light, let earth swallow my might. Hide my grave and keep it hidden as a proof of my pain. Let none else see its grains but Hassan and Hussein. Let none else see its grains but Hassan and Hussein, and tell my two beloved children that they shall see their days when Hassan poison sways and on earth Hussein lays. When Hussein lies barren, my veil shall shroud him. And at his burial, Zahra would prevail. And at his burial, Zahra would prevail.